Let's do a new movie. Lola, which is a low-budget, thoughtful science fiction film from Irish director Andrew Legg, who I had the privilege of interviewing on stage at the BFI South Bank recently. This is expanded from a short film he made a few years ago called The Chronoscope. It takes the form of uh, of an old-fashioned found footage movie, cans of film that have been recovered from decades ago. And the film itself is shot on film on Bolex cameras. He's, you know, he's he has a bit of a kind of Mark Jenkins uh, fascination with that sort of thing. 1941, two sisters, Thomasina and Martha, Stephanie Martini and Emma Appleton, are experimenting with a device that can receive TV and radio broadcasts from the future. So they realise, because the war is on, that they can actually predict German attacks and therefore may be able to save lives. And initially they start putting this information out to the public anonymously because they don't want anyone to know what they've got, but saying, you know, this area is about to be attacked, this area is about to be attacked. And they become known as angels. They also stumble on a series of broadcasts of pop music. Whilst, you know, you were talking about your, in a conversation just before we did this for an interview we did, about you, you watching Top of the Pops. So they start tuning in to pop broadcasts. They see the Kinks performing You Really Got Me, which, of course, in, in the 1940s isn't around yet. And in right. fact, at one point, they start singing a version of that song from the 1940s and it becomes a slogan. We really got Hitler. You know, uh, You Really Got Me becomes a kind of thing that enters popular consciousness. Also, Bob Dylan and most importantly, David Bowie, who one of our uh, heroines falls in love with. Then the army rumble them. They find them, but they agree to work with them. But the problem is that exactly what they're doing with the machine is not entirely controllable. Here's a clip. Not a word to Tom. Promise? Promise. Right, go over there to that panel, back there, over there, to the left. See the switches in the middle row? Yeah. Third one in, flick it. Yes! Now over to the other side. Other side, quickly. And the three silver ones, flick yeah. them up. Yes. I'm going to need a power surge when we're going. Oh, that's far out. Far out of where? Now, tune it to 133 kilohertz. 9.03 p.m. 8th of March. And what she thinks she's going to show him is David Bowie. However, what he actually finds is Reginald Watson somebody else who's become a superstar who sings songs about meeting him at the gallows and marching in line. And she realises that due to the butterfly effect, the stuff that they've been doing to change the course of, you know, to save lives in the war has had unpredicted consequences. One of which is that they have accidentally erased David Bowie from history. That's a mistake. And then worse things start to happen. So here are the things. Firstly, I like the idea because I'm always kind of fascinated by that, you know, by the, the time travel butterfly. It's just something that, that works for me. The songs, uh, the music of the, the film, but the songs of Reginald Watson are written by Neil Hannon, he of the Divine Comedy. And uh, when you said Hitchhiker's Guide earlier on, I thought you were going to say To the Galaxy because, of course, Neil Hannon did so long and thanks for all the fish in that you know, adaptation by Garth Jennings. This is a classic kind of low-budget what-if movie. And, you know, a good idea, inventively played out with limited resources, shot under very kind of constricted circumstances, but let's see how far we can make it go. And actually, the answer is much further than you'd expect. In, in a weird way, it's a bit like Darren Aronofsky's Pie meets Yesterday, you know, in which the Beatles disappear, but only one person can remember them. And a little bit of the sort of dystopian touch of Peter Watkins. I mean, it's rough around the edges and... Not all of it works, but it's got an idea in its head that is an interesting idea. And it pursues it in a way that's got enough sort of vigour and zest and kind of creative uh, energy to make you go, OK, I don't mind about the things that don't work. I think it's a really interesting film. I think he's a talented filmmaker, and I think we're going to hear much more from him in the future. As I said, he's called Andrew Legg. That's L-E-G-G-E. And this, there, there are there are certain things in it that the film gets just right. That the film, you go, they, oh, that's a lovely idea, and you realise that really beautifully. It's nice. And incidentally, they have licensed Bowie songs, which means that the Bowie estate must have signed off on the licensing, which is always a kind of you know a sort of mark of quality. Because as you know, the Bowie estate are very very particular about anything which in the way they use. I'm a big Neil Hannon fan. I think it's great that he's uh, that he's got on board and d done the music for it, and it's a really 
interesting, very low budget, very independent, very independently spirited film that I think deserves to find an audience. It's called Lola. Oh, wow. You've made it to the end. So, as Cliff would have said, congratulations. And now that you're here, let me tell you about all our other offerings. We have other offerings? We have other offerings. You know, reviews and big name guests such as... Tom Hanks. Wow. Alicia Vikander. Wow. Tom Hiddleston. Two Toms. If you are a subscriber, you get all the extra bonus features like uh, one frame back, bonus reviews, that kind of thing. And our new feature, Question Smestion. So if you want to keep up to date with all of this here on YouTube, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also go to kermodeandmayo.com for all the new stuff about the podcast. Tap the link. Go on. Tap the link. You know you want to.